Hi, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, and I'm just a hacker having fun. In the next series of fourth videos, I'm actually going to be going through the source code that I have on my uh, LifeWalker disk, showing you around some of the words that I'm using to build not only the demo itself, but the tools that I need to make the demo a reality. We're going to start with actually a set of words that manipulate the display list. These are the words that I'm working on and I just finished the last major piece of last night and I'm going to take and build up and show you how all these words build up to make the programming process a lot simpler and a lot more efficient. We're going to start by going ahead and uh, as you can see just as a small demonstration here uh, I'm using some of the low-level words that I wrote to manipulate the active display list taking and turning the uh, second and third lines on the display here into mode 6 lines or actually to be more specific the sixth and the seventh position on the display list and as you can see I am mirroring the fourth conventions by using by appending words like C, uh, C dot on the end of it or to basically say write this to the display list at the same way uh, you can of course look at the uh, positions on the display list to show that indeed those bytes are on the display list right there. So without any further ado, I'll go ahead and just turn those back. Sorry. Two, six. There you go, turning those back. Now, with that in mind, those manipulate individual bits and bytes on the display list, and they're nice and easy for making simple tweaks and simple changes, but I wouldn't want to use them to take and build a whole new display list from scratch. We'll take and use other words that I take and build on top of that for that. So. Moving on, I'm actually going to take and use a word here, dr1, to specify drive1, where my second disk is, as you can see here. And it's dr0 and dr1 for drive1 and 2, just so you know. So we start here, and from this point, let's go ahead and I'm going to use a command called index to show the first line of each screen so I can quickly see where everything is. Now, actually, I'm going to go ahead and let's drop that real quick. If you have a number on the stack for index, it will take and use that as your starting point. I'm going to take and get all that off and just show everything here. As you can see, the disk is divided up into a series of screens for display list utilities, display list constants, etc. We've already seen page we've already seen screen one, which is the system constants. We'll start at screen two here. And of course in screen two we have a list of uh, constants. Constant is a special word. It's very simple. You can take and create any uh, value, make it a constant. This is a 4 is now 4, and I can use it interchangeably as so. As you can see. And I'm going to get rid of it. There we go. Moving on, of course. Let me go back. Let me push this into the editor so I can quickly see this. As you can see, constants for uh, some of the things that I know don't require any additional mode bits and whatnot, which one blank lines to eight blank lines, and the jump and JVB instructions. These correspond, of course, to the individual instructions that are here on Appendix 8 
the Antic Display List Instructions page right here. As you can see, the eight blank lines and the uh, Jump and JVB instructions right here. The mode bits in between we take care of at a later screen. So knowing this, of course, we move on. Oops, sorry, one back. We start building some basic primitives to get and set the start of the display list. Now, I can't stress enough the importance of being able, of literally commenting your words so that other people can get them and more importantly so that you can get them you know understand what the hell you were doing six months down the road so uh... of course right here first one being the get the start of the display list dl adder at and all we're doing is getting is taking the location the address that's here in sdl stl and grabbing it and returning it back which if we do that and for the sake of convenience, I'll go ahead and put ourselves in hacks here. We can, of course, see. I'm going to go ahead. Do we, did we load it? We'll find out. Now, notice that's a negative value here. Astute readers will notice this is because this is being interpreted as a signed value, so the last bit, bit 7, is being treated as the sign here. This can quickly be uh, fixed by using the correct display word u dot for unsigned. So there you go. There's the top of the display list as it exists right now as it was set up by CIO. At the same token we can look at individual words inside the display list and this is where things get interesting. Uh, D list at and D list C at. What it's doing here is it's grabbing the value that's uh, that's inside DL adder we're taking that, we're adding that, we're adding an offset here, and we're grabbing the value that's present at that offset. Now this also means here that it requires a parameter. Basically, uh, basically you just need to tell it what offset from the top of the display list you want to pull from. So let's say we want to pull from the topmost bit byte of the display list and grab an 8-bit value. That's a 7-0. Expert readers will note that that means that it's a 8 blank line instruction, as evidenced by here. Again, next value. Again, next value. Again, next value. So we have three blank lines, or more importantly, three sets of eight blank lines for 24 blank lines to take care of the overscan here at the top of the display. And then we start with an actual mode byte here. This is mode two with an LMS instruction that's added on top of it, which, as you can see inside mapping the Atari here, there is an addendum down here at the bottom which explains the numbers to add on top of your existing mode bits to add additional features such as horizontal scroll, vertical scroll, LMS, DLI, etc. So knowing that, that means that LMS is a special instruction. It means grab the next chunk of display data from somewhere in memory as evidenced by the next two bytes after the instruction. And look at that. The next two bytes are in 6502 order. So grab from BC40. Well, as it turns out, there's a much easier way to take and read those two bytes. And that's why I provided the DList at instruction. Watch this. We're actually going to take and go same, same place. Oops, sorry. Let's actually do this uh, from the right out, from the right offset. <laughs> BC40. So there you go. The 16-bit quantity 
in the correct board in the correct byte order to make it nice and easy to deal with. So there you go. And so on and so on. After that, mode bits, mode bytes, and so on and so on and so on. All the way down to the very bottom. Now, I showed you this basically just so that you could see how you can deal with individual pieces. By the same token, we have the screen 3 here which gives us these primitives to uh, read the individual pieces inside the display list that we have here that's set by the top two primitives. We continue on screen 4 to have a set of instructions to write values. So the same way, again, it's in the same pattern here. As you can see, you see at we grab the display list at we grab the display list address, we add the offset, and then we write the value to it. Now recall C at requires the uh, C store requires two values. The value to write and the offset to write to. Much the same way as Well, in this case, we already have the value that we're going to or the value that we're going to write. That's being pulled off our stack. And we already have the offset of what we're going to write. That's being pulled from DL at or at. So that means that all we have to do to write a new value into the display list is know where in the where in memory that we want to write it to relative to the top of the display list. So let's say we want to change the value of offset value number 7 and we want to put in a mode 6 value here. Wham! Look at that. At the, by the same token, we change the next offset again. and we're just changing the different mode values. Let's go back here. Set some things same there. So there you go. As you can see, again, it's all dependent upon the position of things in the stack. So let's go ahead and change that back to same. 2 space 7 list C and two six and we're back to where we started so there we have all the bits and pieces that we need to take and basically just make simple changes to the display list here but when reality we can do a lot more in the next video I'm actually going to take and break that out and start building onto it so we can get more useful ways of looking at the display list and more useful ways of manipulating into the display list using the words on the, on the proceeding screens.